Swan Mok Meditation Retreat. What is the meaning of those three lakes? Swan Mok Meditation Retreat covers a large area of forests, meadows, three small lakes, five large meditation halls, and several small spaces for isolation, individual talks with the monks. Each object or part of the landscape was made to have a special symbolism that has origins in Buddhist teachings. On the property there is a body tree under which I sat. Body tree is a tree under which Buddha sat when he experienced enlightenment. Hi, my name is George. I like to share my views on mindfulness, achieving inner peace and being truly happy. Before I tell you more about those three lakes, if you want to see more of similar content, check out my channel and subscribe. The three lakes are located at the back of the retreat property and are not the same. The left one has irregular shape, the middle one has a small island inside, and the third is one that have a perfect circle. They are all shaped like they are for a reason. Buddhism has many symbols and metaphors, and the three lakes are not exceptions. They represent the three marks of existence, impermanence, unsatisfactoriness, and non-self. Ignorance of the three marks of existence is regarded as the first step of an endless cycle of suffering. Therefore, overcoming this ignorance leads to an end to that circle and consequently to the suffering. It is described in the core of Buddhist teaching, the Four Noble Truths. The Noble Eightfold Path is the explanation of how to achieve the ultimate goal. It all originated from the notion that all beings are conditioned by causes and impermanent and suffering. Not self means there is no I, me or mine in either of the conditioned or unconditioned. Only accepting these facts enables you to become free from suffering and reach Nibbana. It can be done in your current life. You don't need to die to be enlightened and free. The first lake represents the impermanence and it is restless, ever-changing and non-perfect. The word anicca means impermanence, instability, flux. Conditioned things are ever-changing in ceaseless transformation and continuously arising, manifesting and extinguishing. It suggests that all concocted things decay and pass away. It is the first fundamental characteristic of circle of life. Merely seeing impermanence by itself, rather than seeing it entirely and on, in all its elements, is nothing extraordinary. To see impermanence alone, in an incomplete way, that does not include dukkha and anatta, is neither profound nor sufficient to solve our problems. Contemplating impermanence consists of the realization of unsatisfactoriness, non-self, voidness, dustness, and conditionality as well. The second lake recognizes suffering and unsatisfactoriness, but has a peaceful center that represents Nibbana. The path to the island leads over an eight-pillar bridge, which means the Noble Eightfold Path. Dukkha is a Pali term that has many meanings. It can be translated as stress, suffering, misery, unsatisfactoriness, pain, literally hard to endure, difficult to bear. In its limited sense, dukkha is the quality of experience that results when the mind is conditioned into craving, attachment, egoism and selfishness. This feeling is in the form of disappointment, dissatisfaction, frustration, agitation, anguish, dis-ease and despair from the crudest to the subtlest levels. It is the result of anicca. Impermanent things cannot satisfy our wants and desires, no matter how hard we try. The third lake celebrates the acceptance of non-self and therefore has a perfectly round shape. Anatta is non-self, 
selflessness, non-selfhood, the fact that all things without exception, including Nibbana, are not self and lack any essence of substance that could properly be called a self. This truth does not deny the existence of things, but denies that there they can be owned and controlled, or be an owner or controller in any but a relative conventional sense. Anatta is the third fundamental characteristic of Sankara, the circle of life. All things will change, they are unstable, all things are unsatisfactory. There is nothing like that we can call mine. There are three kinds of desires. The first is sensory desire, finding pleasure in things, in shapes and colors, sounds, smells, tastes or tactful objects. Then there is desire to become, a desire to be this or that according to what someone wants. The third kind, kind is the desire not to become, the desire not to be this or that. Anyone can notice that whenever there is a desire, there is a feeling, and when we are forced to act at will, we are obligated to suffer again by the action. If there is to be Nibbana, freedom from suffering of any kind, there must be an absolute and complete absence of desire. The way to achieve that is through the Noble Eightfold Path, using the practice of mindfulness meditation. Mindfulness meditation is a powerful ancient technique that we are using for years, mainly to reduce stress, anxiety, depression and achieve inner peace. The method we use to accept all three marks of existence is called Vipassana, the meditation of insight. Vipassana literally means clear seeing, to see clearly, distinctly, directly into the true nature of things, into the three marks of existence. Vipassana is popularly used to refer to the practice of mental development for the sake of genuine insight. It is important not to confuse the physical posture, theory and method of such practices with the actual realization of impermanence, unsatisfactoriness and non-self. I hope that this story will help you with your mindfulness journey. Let me know what you want to know the most and how can I help you with my experience. You can find out more following the links in the description below. Please comment, subscribe, like, share and help me grow this channel. See you next week.